Hey everybody, this is Josh Wyden here. Thanks for joining me for today's REI 360 training. Today we're going to talk about markets and trends, and uh, more specifically, the real estate market. You know, um, sometimes it feels like the sky is falling down. In 2007, 2008, 2009, it really looked like the real estate market was tanking for good, and all of the uh, you know the profits that had been made over the last 10 years were just in the tank. Well, at the same time, you know. Right now, we're kind of in a time of recovery, and before then, we were at the top of the market. Everything looked like we were going to make money in the real estate market. Uh, it, you know, prices were going to continue to go up forever. Well, we've learned, I think everybody has learned, that the market is a cycle. Uh, about a month ago, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who um, he runs a commercial real estate company uh, out of Virginia, and um, basically, we were talking about cycles in the marketplace. And it's something that you know I've, I've wanted to do a training on for a while. So we're going to do that. We're going to do that. We're, uh, today we're going to take a look at number one. This idea of a cycle. First, what are some of the uh, some of the characteristics of this cycle? Some of the different stages. What are your real estate investment strategies during each stage of that cycle? And then further, how to actually identify where you are, not on the graph but in real life by looking at the state of the economy, the state of the housing market, inventories, rental rates, all that kind of stuff to determine where we are in the market and what your strategy is gonna be. All right, so let's get started. Uh, first and foremost, let's take a look at this cycle. Um, cycle is a, a wave, you know, it, we've got the bottom, it goes up, it goes up, it gets to the top, and then we go, go back down again. Uh, you'll notice that different points along this cycle are noted by, um, by emotions. Now these are emotions of the marketplace, emotions of investors. And you know, the first, um, the first part of, uh, of, this, of this cycle that we're gonna look at, and we're gonna call it expansion. And this starts from the bottom. At the bottom of the, of the cycle, you've got people that are, they're coming out of this depressed uh, feeling about whatever it is. In this case, we're talking about real estate, but uh, whatever the, uh, the market is. And, the market's depressed, people are not interested in investing, it's only the real full-time investors who have been doing it for years and years and years who are staying in. And then we start getting a little bit of an uptick. Oh man, it looks like there's some hope here. And as this hope grows, it becomes relief and optimism, and excitement, through thrill and euphoria, and it feeds into the top of the market until we get to the top and everybody's kind of looking around saying, hey, can this continue forever? Can this just keep going on? You get this anxiety and then this denial as the, as the prices start to tick downward just a little bit. People are denying, no, 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 this is, this is just a temporary thing in the market. But then it turns into fear, desperation, panic, capitulation, despondency, and right back to this, depressed, this depression right at the bottom of the market. The key here, you know, a, a, lot, of, um, a lot of investment gurus or a lot of people out there will, will tell you that you buy low and you sell high and that's how you make tons of money in the market. And sure, you can, you can do that, but it's very difficult to be outside of the market and to look at it without being, you know, getting involved in these emotions that go along with it. The way you do that is realizing that you can make money when the market goes up, you can make money when the market goes down, because ultimately you know the flip side is always gonna happen. If you're at the top, you know it, prices are gonna decrease. If you're at the bottom, you know they're gonna increase. So let's identify how to do that and let's talk about some strategies. Um, we've got expansion where we start from the bottom and we start to have this uptick and we start to get this excitement and this thrill that the market is increasing. We enter then the phase of hyper supply where there's a ton of properties on the market. You're getting towards that top where you have this euphoria and everybody wants to get into the market. I mean, you, you might have heard the, um, the expression, it's one of my favorites, everything that is popular is wrong. Well, in investing, that's certainly true. When everybody starts talking about the market, everybody thinks that real estate's a great investment, that's when you gotta kinda back off and say, okay, what's going on here? That's when you have this hyper supply. You get to this anxiety where the best investors know it's time to sell. The people that are just getting into it keep telling themselves, it's gonna be okay, just keep going, just keep going. And then this denial and this fear, that's when we have this hyper supply. And then that moves into this, this time frame of, of recession. That's when Everybody knows the market's kind of tanking. It's kind of this fleeing and purging of these excessive prices. And again, 
this, this time frame where we get to the bottom of the market and we enter this time of recovery. So really, you've got the ups and downs here and they just feed one into the other. Expansion, hyper supply, recession, recovery, and that feeds right back into expansion again. So what's your investment strategy in each of these? What's your play? Okay, during the expansion time, you wanna buy and hold uh, when you're towards the bottom. This, you know, basically we're buying it low. Buy low, sell high. As this increase begins, and you can see this optimism and excitement and thrill and euphoria coming, that's when we want to sell near the top. Uh, and then we're going to look for those awesome cash flow investments that are out there. But it's going to be limited. So buy low, sell high, and right in the middle here, it's a great time to flip properties. This is the time frame when you're buying um, distressed properties, fixing them up, putting them back on the market. It's the time frame when you're going to have increases from the, the work and the the um, you know sweat equity and you know putting the pieces together that added value to the property. You're also going to have increases in value based on um, you know appreciation and the uptick in the market. So it's a it's a win-win with there. Once we get into the hyper supply, this euphoria and anxiety and denial and fear, this this feeling at the top, we want to sell. If we're buying. These are buy and holds for the long, long term. We're not talking the next three years. We're not talking five years. This is the kind of stuff where you see a really great deal. It makes sense on a cash flow standpoint. You don't really care if the market's going to tank. It's, it makes sense. You're, you know, you're going to buy the property. It's going to cash flow. And if the market tanks and, and the value uh, of, of the property is lost for the next 10 years, it doesn't even matter. You're still putting money in your pocket from cash flow. Once we get towards the bottom and we're in this recession, now is the time to buy for cash flow. It's the same type of idea. We want to we want to buy up everything we can because we're at the bottom. Now's the time to set the table for the next recovery, for the next expansion. Okay, so we're looking around and we're saying, okay, I'm gonna buy and buy and buy and buy and buy. Make sure that all of our investments are cash flowing so that we're making money every month, regardless of what, what the value is. But this is what is really going to set the table for us to get rich. That's, that's where it is. We're making money on the cash flow to pay the bills, but once we hit that recovery, that expansion, now we're gonna really build wealth. Um, and then we're waiting for the boom. That's really what it is. This is a good time also to take a look at market trends in your neighborhoods. Um, look at areas that where regentrification is right on the cusp because when you have that recovery and you have that expansion, those are the areas where you're gonna see huge booms. Uh, certainly more stable areas are great because you're going to get the increases anyway, but right on the cusp of there, it, these are areas where you can still pick up properties fairly cheap. And, you know, as the neighborhood turns, all of a sudden you're going to be picking up hundreds of thousands of dollars on each property instead of tens of thousands of dollars. So then when we get to recovery, our strategy there is to negotiate and buy right. Prices are starting to increase. And we're almost back to that period of expansion. But as we get into recovery, now's the time when you can remind people how bad things were and why you can only pay what you can for properties, why you have to offer such low prices. And this is a great time where you can still get deals. Um, you want to buy right. You want to push your numbers and make sure that when you're investing, you're investing in the right stuff. So this is what the cycle looks like. Expansion, hyper supply, recession, and recovery. On paper, very simple. We all know how, it, you know, it's, it's easy. After the fact, they say hindsight's 2020. Everybody saw this, uh, you know, this uh, real estate crash coming, except the people that were investing in real estate, you know, and that was a whole lot of people. So now let's talk about how do we identify each point in this phase, in this cycle, in, from real world events not just from you know, taking a look at the graph and saying, oh, it looks like we're right here today. No, that doesn't work. We wanna take a look at real world events that trigger, uh, trigger us and, and kind of give us an idea of where we are. Right here, we've got 10 indicators or 10 areas um, and different values for each of these, these four phases, expansion, hyper supply, recession, and recovery. Now, I, know, I know this is a little bit hard to read. Um, so I'm going to go over each one of these and we're going to kind of give you a, a blueprint or a footprint of what um, each one of these phases in the cycle looks like. Okay. So let's talk about expansion. During the expansion phase, the demand for real estate is on the increase. 
Um, you got a lot of properties that are getting multiple offers and you find yourself as an investor you're constantly following up with an agent. Hey, do you have anything new on the market? It's the kind of thing where prices are, are on the rise and that's the next thing. We've got rising prices and you know their properties are selling faster and faster and faster. Um, if you were involved in real estate um, in you know the latter part of uh, the 2000s, you know 2006 time frame, you probably can remember turning on on the TV or maybe you know you're investing yourself and hearing stories about the guy who bought a house, you know put it under contract, settled, put it back on the market, you know, and three months after he bought the thing, he's making 50 grand on the property. That was happening. We had this huge increase in, in the velocity of sales. And prices were going up. Supply, there's little supply. Houses, they go on the market and they're being sold. It's certainly a seller's market. It's a, an environment where there's a lot more buyers than there are sellers. Days on market, there's a short time on the market. Number of foreclosures, there's hardly any foreclosures on the market. I mean, the inventory is low. So foreclosures are being bought up just like the rest of the properties. This is a time when you're looking at businesses and job growth. This is a time where you see businesses relocating people to new venues. You have really robust growth in, in business and you know a really strong economy. Unemployment is very low. You have more people that are qualified because of their uh, because they're employed. Uh, they're qualified to buy those houses. Vacancy rates for rentals. Um, the vacancy rates are slightly above average, okay? And they're growing. And basically, the reason for that is that you have more people buying. So you have higher vacancy rates. Uh, and then rental in inventory, it's stable to decreasing. Why? Because you have a higher demand for properties. So a lot of landlords, they're getting out. They're selling those properties. They're making, making money on that, on that end of things. Now we move into the time of hyper supply. The demand now is still strong. You still, I mean, we're talking about the top of the market. People are still rushing in. They're in that denial, that, that denial phase. Uh, they're, they still think property values are gonna continue to, to grow. Property values at this time, um, they're still inflated, but it's taking a little bit longer to sell. The supply, it, it's a slowly growing supply. So instead of, you know, a, uh, a one month or one week supply of homes on the market. Now there's a one month or two months and slowly it's growing. The number of the days on market that a property sits, this is beginning to increase. Foreclosures, there's no outright foreclosure, but you can kind of see signs that there's some stresses in the market. Instead of houses outright being in foreclosure, maybe you see a lot more um, you know, pre-notifications before a foreclosure, 30 and 60 day late payments, things like that. Business and job growth, it's slowing, but it's still growing. You know, you still have job growth occurring, but it's, it's starting to slow down. New construction, land during, during hyper supply, land is at an all time high. You have, um, you have builders and they're just buying lots at any price they can because they're still in this euphoria and this denial where they're throwing money, throwing money. Oh, the prices keep going. Keep, I got to keep building. So we're at an all-time high. Unemployment, it's starting to increase, but it's still really under control. It, for all intents and purposes, everything looks like it's still okay. There's no overt signs of a catastrophe. Vacancy rates, they're kind of flatlining. Instead of you know increasing vacancy rates, it's just kind of sitting there. And then you have slowly increasing inventory of, um, of rep rental properties. As we enter the recession phase, demand is going down. Prices are going down. Um, we've, we've got more and more in inventory, less and less demand. Property values are falling. This is the time frame where you're gonna hit the bottom of the market. So, you know, as the values are coming down, Right in this recession time frame, you got the bottom of the market, you've got increasing supply, and a lot more investment properties are hitting the market. Why? Well, you have you got a lot of people that bought too high and they're they're bailing out. I mean, back here in, on the uh, hyper supply and in the expansion, you had increasing vacancy rates and more people buying properties. So, you know, they don't really jive together too well. 
And now you've got a lot of people leaving the market as, as investors. You've got decreasing property values and increasing uh, investments on the market. Days on market, there's a lot of properties that are actually being pulled off of the market because there's no interest. There's so few people buying that you know, you've got decent houses that aren't even being looked at. Foreclosures, we got that, this is the time when you have the largest number of foreclosures. You see short sales, you see a lot of REO listings. Um, this is also, you know, you, you, recently, this is the time when we heard about the BPOs, you know, and the bank's opinion value and all, all this kind of stuff that was kind of new language that entered our lexicon of, uh, of conversation as investors. Businesses and job growth is really becoming stagnant. If anything, growth is declining at this point at the, in the recession period. New construction, there's no con- new construction. Land values have tanked. In fact, now's the time. If you're looking at land and it's right on the edge of that regentrification area, start buying it up because it is at all-time lows. At least with a house, you know, an, an investor has a cash flow property that you know, hypothetically can cover his mortgage on the property by putting the tenant in there. But if you have land, it's just dead money. It's just sitting there. This is the time if you are a builder and you know that, yep, the recovery is going to come, start buying up land. Um, unemployment, high unemployment, vacancy rates are, um, you know, we, we've got vacancy rates getting lower and lower. Rental inventory uh, is, is um, getting less and less because it's, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's getting to be a better and better environment. Now we get into the recovery phase. Recovery phase, we have increasing demand and an absorbing, uh, it begins to o- absorb the oversupply of inventory. Um, and that, you know, would make sense. As we go into property values, values are still low, but they're beginning to creep up. You can see here, you know, right at the depression and hope and relief, this is the time period where values are starting, starting to increase, but people are still skeptical. We've just, been, we've just been through a really difficult time. The supply, there's still an oversupply of houses compared to the demand. Um, the days on market, they're starting to decrease. Instead of taking nine months to sell, now we're at six, seven months, you know, maybe as low as three, but they're, they're decreasing. Foreclosures, they're still part of the marketplace, but they're becoming less and less prevalent. Job growth um, is beginning to increase. However, it's being spurred by investment by the government, by um, you know government incentives and programs, uh, you know corporations forcing some hiring when they don't necessarily need it to help stimulate the economy and stimulate growth. Um, new construction. There's very few properties that are you know bu- being built at this phase. This is the phase right before we enter the expansion phase, where you know that that time from starts starts to pick up again. Unemployment, it starts to decrease. Vacancy rates, they're declining rates and uh, high demand um, because there's less uh, inventory for rental uh, rental properties. So you can see that this this cycle, it is a cycle. It's like a circle. There's no end. There's no beginning. It just keeps going over and over and over and over and over again. These are the types of things that if you know going into them and you keep a clear head, when the market tanks, it's a great time to buy. When everybody's going crazy, buying up property, start selling. You know, you just need to be able to have a clear head and identify where we are in the market cycle. And by doing so, we just team up. Okay, we're in hyper, hyper supply, we're gonna sell, and we're gonna hold for the long term. This is our invest, investment strategy. As that changes, as the, as the market changes, and we're at a different, different point in the cycle, now we're in the recession, time to buy. We're gonna buy for cash flow. Buy, buy, buy. You're gonna change your strategy to meet the market, and pretty much do the opposite of what everybody else is doing. So that's the end of our training today. Uh, if you know your market, and you follow the cycles, you can make money at any time. Real estate is a great investment tool, um, but being educated is a very important part of using that tool in your, uh, in your investment strategy. Until next time, I wish you the best of luck in your real estate investing, and take care.